Not every trial has an impact, but some MRC CTU trials have made a big difference in many different ways. Perhaps the most important impact our trials have had is on the treatment of patients, both in the UK and elsewhere. Testicular cancer is uh, not a common cancer, but in young men of the, in their 20s and 30s, it's the, one of the commonest cancers they can get. The MRC has done quite a lot of trials in developing new treatments for testicular cancer, both for advanced disease, but particularly in very early stage disease. So if you go back uh, 30 or 40 years, we used to treat patients with very big doses of radiotherapy to the backs of their tummies and right down into their pelvis. And uh, that cured most patients but it also had risks of late side effects, particularly cancer, within the area that had been irradiated. So the first MRC trial looked at whether we could reduce the amount of radiation that we use by giving it to less of the body, so just to the back of the abdomen. And we demonstrated that your chance of, being, of relapsing when you had less, uh, a smaller field of radiotherapy was exactly the same as if you'd had the more extensive radiotherapy. So that, that changed practice internationally. One of the, the major contributions the MRC made was actually not a clinical trial itself in a way, but um, a collaboration that we set up whereby all the groups that were treating testicular cancer worldwide agreed to pool their data um, and collectively we analysed the data and came up with a single prognostic model. It did lead immediately onto clinical trials with collaborative groups that looked at reducing the amount of treatment we give in early stage disease and intensifying treatment in the poor prognosis patients, trying to improve their survival further still. Another example of our international impact is the treatment of TB. Tuberculosis is one of the diseases that we are um, particularly studying here at the MRC Clinical Trials Unit. It's a disease which has a very long history. In fact, it's one of the earliest diseases known to man. It primarily affects people's lungs, and if they're not treated, there's a, a strong possibility they will actually die from the disease. There's about nine million patients each year who are newly infected with tuberculosis worldwide. A few years ago, the WHO had made a recommendation for a particular treatment which was a bit cheaper than what the gold standard treatment was, but they believed it was just as effective. And we were a bit concerned about that, that in fact the evidence wasn't perhaps as good as it should be. So we conducted a trial referred to as Study A, as a consequence of doing that study, we actually showed that this new recommendation from WHO was actually not particularly appropriate because the patients treated with, with that regimen were doing far less well than the ones who were being treated with what we could term the gold standard treatment. And clearly this was worrying because it meant that many patients were actually having poor outcomes when they should have been treated properly. When the trial got published in The Lancet um, early in around about 2004, WHO decided that that recommendation should be completely removed uh, and that patients should only be recommended to receive the original recommendation, or the gold standard one, because in fact otherwise they would be being treated with inferior treatment. Another example of the impact of our trials is on the treatment of babies affected by HIV, where the SHARE trial has led to lives being saved. The SHARE trial, which we did with our colleagues in South Africa, part of it was really asking about early treatment versus deferring treatment according to guidelines in young babies who've just been diagnosed with HIV infection. The deferred group, those who started treatment later, um, had higher death rates than the groups that started early. And so, the Data Monitoring Committee, who were looking at these data very carefully as the trial was going along, advised that the trial stopped early. So as soon as those results came out, um, they were taken up by guideline groups around the world, including the World Health Organization. And really, they were interested in them as soon as the results were presented, um, even before they were actually published. Um, so guidelines had really actually changed that policy and advised starting early in all babies who were diagnosed with HIV infection um, about the same time actually or even before the full paper came out. Half of the babies with HIV infection born in Africa are dead by the age of two and here we were saying that you need to diagnose babies early 
and then you need to get them on treatment quickly. Now, that's been challenging, but it's uh, improved over time. Children still lag behind adults, but um, I think the SHARE trial was a key trial in putting that on the map. Before then, people were still arguing about when you should start treatment, and there were differences across the Atlantic, and no big trial to inform uh, what you should really do. MRC-CTU trials have also made a difference in other ways. For example, they've led to improved relationships between patients and researchers. Well, the Concord trial was actually a very important trial because it was the first trial that we did in the UK with our colleagues in Ireland and France um, in HIV infection. It was designed to test a drug called AZT, which actually had been developed uh, as an anti-cancer drug in the 1960s. In uh, 1985, uh, HIV uh, killed young people very fast. There was a real desperate need for many people who were prepared to take almost anything that um, could help them uh, uh, live longer. Concord was groundbreaking. It was the first trial where there were community representatives on the trial committee. Um, it was the first trial where we put together a participant's newsletter to go to everyone taking part in the trial. When the decision was taken to halve the uh, drug uh, from a gram down to half a gram, that needed to get through data safety monitoring, it needed to, uh, we need to explain this to people on the trial, um, and if we hadn't started developing the, uh, a regular newsletter, we wouldn't have had the ability uh, to do that. Remember, we were asking people to be on this trial for over three years. And one of the other things the Concord trial did was it educated, enthused and inspired a whole generation of community treatment activists. Um, and that generation of community treatment activists haven't just stayed in uh, HIV, they have gone on to take their learning from that into cancer trials, into Alzheimer's work, uh, across the piece. And the partnership with the researchers and the clinicians, uh, where it's strong, I think, brings fantastic benefits to both sides. Mm.